Okay, so hello and welcome back to another Getting Started with Unity tutorial. In this video, we're going to be covering game objects and components. I hope you guys enjoy it. Let's get into the video. So this video will be split up into four parts. Part one will be explaining what is a game object. Part two will be explaining what is a component. Part three, I'll be showing you some built-in components, explaining how they work. And then that'll lead on to step four, where we'll be creating our own simple component. Okay, so for step one, I'll be explaining quickly and simply, what is a game object? At the end of the day, a game object is just a thing in your Unity scene. We have five game objects right here in our scene main, okay? And if I click on a game object, it selects it in the scene. If I double click it, it takes me to where it is. I can also use the controls WASD and holding right mouse button to fly around the scene and go over to the camera here. We can see the different components on the camera and I'll be explaining components in step two. But if we go and create a fresh game object with nothing on it, we go to right click on the hierarchy, create empty, or equally you can go up to game object, create empty, or use the shortcut control shift N, okay? That creates us an empty game object. Let's go over to it, okay? Well, actually we don't need to because it's just spawned it right here. Um, now it seems a bit weird without any rendering, okay? It's just a position. It just shows us where it is. We can move it, but it's effectively uh, an empty object with nothing on it, it still exists in the scene somewhere. Every single game object has a transform component. It has to, it has to be somewhere, okay? You can't remove this component. Uh, the actual button isn't even there. I was gonna say it's uh, grayed out, but it's not even there. And effectively we can add components to make this game object do something, to give it give it a meaning, give it a purpose. Because right now it, it just exists, right? It doesn't do anything. And you can delete it with the delete key, the del key, and you can just make a new one. You know, you can make more, you can duplicate more. You've got tons of game objects, but they all don't do anything. And that leads on to step two, which is components. So step two is about what is a component. So a component is a piece of code that you add to a game object and it works along with the other components on that game object to make gameplay logic and to make your game do things. So we have an empty game object that doesn't really do anything because all it has is a transform. You know, we can see where it is here. We can you know, rotate it if we want and we can see it's got a different position, but there's no rendering. There's no logic. There's nothing on it to do anything. Okay, if we press play, it doesn't do anything. It just sits there. And there's some other data on here, like the game object's name, whether it's enabled or not, which basically when you toggle this, it means that all the components on it get enabled and disabled. So this uh, cube over here, if I disable it, the rendering goes away, the collider goes away and so on. But if I re-enable it, then it comes back, okay? But over to our game object over here. Um, yeah, so it's got also tags and layers, but that's nothing we're gonna cover right now. Static, it's just basically a way of telling Unity this object is never gonna move, but you don't even need to think about that right now. This is a very beginner tutorial. We're simply gonna click add component. And as you see, we've got all these different built-in components. So this component's about audio effects, meshes, so that's like the mesh render and mesh filter, some text mesh stuff. Okay, now usually you know what you want and you just click add and you start typing it in. So for example, saying I want this thing to fall, I'll give it a rigid body, okay? Now, even without a collider, this thing will fall because it has a rigid body, okay? As long as it has these two components, it's gonna fall. So if I press play, you'll actually notice the Y value of our object. Even though you can't really see it, it's falling, like it's falling and you see the Y value is going down and down and down. Okay, and that's because of this rigid body. The rigid body basically says, okay, move the transform. So it says, get the transform component and move it. That's basically what it's doing. And we can write our own components to say, for example, get the rigid body and change the mass, get the transform and change the rotation. You know, it's whatever you want. You can write code to do that. And that's what we're gonna be doing in step four. So step three is some examples of built-in components. Now I chucked on the rigid body, but I'm gonna explain a few more. So yeah, rigid body is for physics. If you want your object to fall and get hit, it needs a rigid body, that's what handles all that stuff. And you can tweak the values on here for how heavy it is, drag, whether it uses gravity or not, and so on and so forth. Feel free to look through these. And if you actually need some help, click the question mark on the component and it opens up, uh, opened up on my other monitor, a tab where it shows you all about it and you can read more than what I'm explaining in this video about each component, okay? Now, if we add some more components that are useful and common, for example, we have the box collider or any collider, really, if you just search the keyword collider, you'll get all the different colliders for different things. So for example, our plane has a mesh collider over here, our cube has the box collider, and our game object, maybe we want the sphere collider, okay? And the sphere collider works along with the rigid body, so the rigid body falls, but the collider says, you know, don't fall through things. So if I go over here, okay, I'm gonna add a mesh filter. So mesh filter tells it what shape to use. So it's gonna use the built-in sphere. Now, yes, you can import your own meshes that you make in other software like Blender or Maya, if you've heard of those, um, but I'm gonna use the built-in sphere, okay? But because it hasn't got a mesh renderer, it doesn't, get sh it doesn't get rendered at all. So we'll add a mesh renderer 
and the mesh render component uses the mesh filter to tell it, hey, you know, render as a sphere. Now, pink, you might see this in other games if you've ever got broken textures. Pink is a way of saying, hey, here, something's broken. It means we're missing our material. And the reason it goes bright pink is because it's very noticeable. So if you've got a scene full of different objects and one of your textures is broken and it was, for example, black or green or blue, you might not notice it. It might blend in unless your game is bright pink, but, you know, not many games are bright pink. Let's go add a material. There's all these different ones. I've got my blue one that I made last video. We'll just go with that, okay? So now we have a sphere shape with a sphere mesh renderer making it look spherical and a sphere collider. And because of the sphere collider, it'll fall and it'll actually roll like a ball. Now, obviously, because it just fell flat to the ground, it doesn't roll. But if I want to, for example, move over here and I'm gonna put it to actually fall onto this, oops, sorry, drag it up on the green. So now when it falls, it's actually gonna hit that blue box and roll off to the side, okay? Like so. Now the ball rolls and it falls off the edge and it falls down. Okay, so we've just built up some gameplay behavior with this sphere that rolls and gets hit just from adding some components to it. Okay, now we're going to add our own component to it to make it effectively jump when we press spacebar, you know, just, just an example. That's what we're going to do for step four. So I'm going to rename our thing to be the player, for example, even though it's not really much of a player. And then I'm going to say, let's make a new folder by right clicking new folder and we'll call it scripts. This is what everyone calls their folder of scripts. Scripts is the same as components really, but you might also have code in your game that aren't components. Not everything you write has to be a component. You might have code to do other things, but for the sake of this, we're gonna be writing a component. So let's just make a new C-sharp script and we're gonna call it, um, you know, jump test or something, right? Up to you, call it jump test. Now, once you've made it, it actually takes a second to compile. Now it's created it here, it's put some default code in. We want to open it in Visual Studio. So if we double click and just be patient, I'm gonna skip ahead to when it's open. So we've opened up our script in Visual Studio. Now, this isn't gonna be a C-sharp coding tutorial. I'm not gonna explain what every single keyword means. I've got plenty of videos on that in the past, and I might even do a special C-sharp beginner tutorial series, just explaining the basics of C-sharp so you guys can then watch that before you get into Unity, because some things might be a bit confusing if you've never coded before. Um, so I'm gonna really quickly uh, skip over a lot of the unimportant details for this and just explain what you need to understand for how this works. So ignore the public class, Okay, the name is just the name of our script. Make sure this matches the name of the file. If this doesn't match the name of the file, you'll get problems in Unity. Now, mono behavior um, effectively means it's a component. There's more to it than that, but if something has colon, if your class has colon mono behavior, it means that it can be attached to a game object. So if we actually go back over into Unity and go to our player, okay, and we drag this on, we can either drag it on and let go, or if I undo, we can actually just search it, jump test, okay? We have now added our own code to this object. And as you're probably aware, it does nothing. So I'm going to make it not roll. Let's just put it over here. Press spacebar. Okay, so there's our, our ball. It doesn't do anything, right? If I press spacebar, it doesn't jump yet because I haven't told it to. Now, we're going to do something very basic here. I'm going to explain, first of all, void start. Uh, let's just think of it as start, okay? Even though the void is still important. As it tells you here, start is called before the first frame update. So effectively what this means is when this object first exists in the scene, this is called. So if you've got any code you need to do to like set up the object, you do it in here. And then there's this one called update, which as it says is called every frame. This is where you write logic that happens every single frame of the game. It's always running, always gonna be running. Now there are other things you can add. There's one called awake, for example, if you type awake, we've got this one called awake, but we're not gonna be using that in this video. And for the sake of this example, we're not gonna be using start either. We're just gonna be using update. I'm gonna leave in the message so you guys can keep that in mind if you've not seen it before. So we can write some code in here. We want to make the ball jump, okay? What do we need to do to make the ball jump? For our implementation, we just want the rigid body, which is the physics thing that, you know, handles it falling and adding forces. We just want to tell it to add an upwards force, all right? When we press spacebar, we want an upwards force to be added. That, that's it for this video. We're going to keep it simple. So every frame, we need to listen for the player pressing the spacebar key. Because if they press the spacebar key, we want to add force. And if they don't, we don't want to add force. So I'm going to say if, okay, now, as I've mentioned, if you don't know C-sharp at all, I'd recommend watching something elsewhere. You can still follow along if you don't know. I'm going to keep it very simple. This is just a condition, okay? We're saying if the player presses the spacebar key, okay? So if input dot get key down, okay? And then if we open our brackets, we have the suggestion to use a key code. So if we press key code dot we get all the different keys we can use. Now, in Unity, they've recently released a new input system. This is using the old input system. But as a beginner, uh, right now, I'd definitely explain, uh, sorry, recommend 
using this just to get started before moving on to the new input system. If you do want to look into that, I've got videos on it. But anyway, we want to use the space key. So kiko.space, okay? And then after this condition, we want to open some curly braces. And this is basically saying, if this condition is met, run this code. So if the person pressed down the spacebar key, this frame, because remember this is called every frame, if they press the spacebar key, this frame, run this code. So we're gonna say, well, we want to add an upwards force to our um, ball, basically. So we need the rigid body. We need to tell it, you know, rigid body, add some force. So to get reference to the rigid body, we want to add uh, what's called a field. Okay, now a field on a class, this is a class, okay, we're gonna add a field. And a field is some data that can be set and stored. So we're gonna say public uh, rigid body, because that's the name of the component we want to access. Remember, we've got a rigid body on here, uh, wherever it is, rigid body. So we're gonna say uh, public rigid body, we'll just call it rigid body, okay? And we don't even have to do anything after that, just say public rigid body, rigid body. Now it actually says that things are already used, so we'll just say RB, okay, whatever. We're gonna call it RB. And that just means whenever we want to uh, re uh, reference, sorry, the rigid body in here, we just say RB, okay? So in here, I wanna say, well, we want to add some force when I press spacebar, so say RB dot add force. And it wants us to pass in some data. We can either pass in a vector free or some floats or whatever, which are different data types. We want to pass in an upwards vector, effectively saying, you know, add force upwards. So we'll say vector free dot up. Now that has a magnitude of one, but we might want to tweak that, right? We might want to say how much force to add. So if we make another public field and we make it a float, a float is effectively a decimal where an integer is a whole number. And we'll just call this like jump force or something, okay? Now, if we say multiply by jump force, now that's gonna add an upwards vector of this much magnitude, okay? And then we're just gonna add a semicolon to end the line. So this is now saying whenever we press spacebar, add a force upwards, okay? Um, and another thing is, this is an impulse force. This force has been added on the key press, add all the force. We're not doing it like every frame or anything. We're not actually like, for example, if you had a car accelerating each frame by frame, then you would use uh, a different thing. But right now we're just gonna say comma, force mode dot impulse. It's telling it this is an impulse, uh, an impulsive force, an instant force using its mass. Okay, now you could also use this one called velocity change, which as an instant force ignoring mass, because obviously if you add a force and something is really heavy, it needs more force to move the same distance. We're just gonna use it as velocity change actually. We don't care about mass. Now, if I go back to Unity, we look down at our script. It looks quite similar to the other ones. We've got some fields we can set, you know, like a Boolean or a string or an integer or a float. We want a rigid body, okay? Now in Unity, you can actually drag references. So the, the rigid body we want is this one up here. So if we click on it and we drag down here and release, it's now got a reference to it. When we say RB, we're actually gonna be referring to this rigid body, which is on our sphere. And then we want some jump force. So for example, five, you know, I don't know what five really means. Maybe it's five units, but let's just pretend we don't know what it is. And we're just gonna say play and we're gonna test it. Okay, I'm gonna press spacebar and our ball jumps. I'm gonna spam spacebar and our ball goes flying up into the air. And because it's got a rigid body and it uses gravity, it's gonna come flying back down, okay? And there's our ball. Let's say the jump height isn't enough. We're gonna set it to 50 and we go back and we press spacebar. And it goes flying into the sky because we added you know, a lot more force than we did earlier. Um, but that's just an example of creating our own component to call some code on built-in components. So as we said, we want to make our ball jump. We add some force. You know, maybe this is too much. Uh, we go back down to five or four even. Now, the thing is, if you change any of these values while the game is running and then you stop running, you'll notice it's four right now. It goes back to five. So if you change values while running, you have to remember what they are, stop playing and change them back. That's an important thing to remember, okay? Now, there are some like best practice things. Uh, like I've not done this in the cleanest way possible. For example, um, what you're meant to do is instead of using public, we're meant to use this thing called serialized field private. It's just better practice, but for you guys, it's not that important. You're not gonna, you know, you're not gonna do anything worse really by using public. It's not gonna break anything. It's just a better practice thing that you'll pick up as you get better. But I don't want to confuse people and you know make the video longer explaining what that means. So just go with public. Uh, if this was private, and we actually go back into Unity, you'll notice it goes away. Private means you know don't make it publicly accessible. We but if we make it public, it is obviously publicly accessible and we can change it. Um, sometimes when you change that kind of stuff, you lose references, but because um, we didn't change any names, we still kept it as RB, it actually still kept our reference to the player's rigid body, okay?
But yeah, that's it for this video. I hope you guys enjoyed it. Feel free to let me know down below what kind of topics you want me to be covering. I'll be covering lots of different things about Unity, such as the animation, the physics system, collisions, how to do things when things hit each other things and whatever, right? It's up to you. Feel free to let me know down below. I'll definitely be looking at those and making judgments on what to cover next. But yeah, if you liked the video, please leave a like and subscribe. I'll see you guys next time. Thanks for watching and goodbye. But of course, before I end, I've got to thank my patrons. A special thanks to Liz Kimber, Josh Folsom, Beard or Die, Dustin Miller, Francisco Diaz, Rec, Yoris Letter, Hades Orko, Rene, and Marie Baldwin. If anyone else is able to help support the channel monetarily, link to my Patreon is down below. If not, there are also links down below to other social media, such as Twitch, Twitter, and Discord. If you could help me out by following on any of those, it'd be greatly appreciated. I'll see you guys next time. Thanks for watching, and goodbye.